Hello everyone. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Savita Swaminathan, Senior Product Marketing Manager at AWS. Joining me today is my colleague Pranav Chachra, Senior Product Manager at AWS, to talk to us about AWS Local Zones. Hi Pranav, thanks for joining me. Absolutely. Thanks for having me here. Great. Well, let's get started. Our customers know AWS regions and AWS availability zones when we talk about global infrastructure, Pranav. What is AWS Local Zones? Yeah, so AWS Local Zones are a type of infrastructure that we have launched to address customers' hybrid cloud and edge computing requirements. Local Zones bring compute, storage, database, and other services closer to end users and on-premises installations. Logically, you can think of Local Zones as very similar to availability zones. It's just that local zones are not physically located in regions, and instead they lie in a different physical geography altogether. Mm -hmm. We've placed these local zones in major metropolitan areas where we don't have regions today. And so AWS local zones, you bring them closer to your customers by placing them in these large metropolitan um, areas. Let's unpack right. that a little bit, right? When we talk about AWS infrastructure, we think about the global footprint that we have today, which as we know, spans 84 availability zones, 26 regions. Mm -hmm. We have the largest footprint of any public cloud provider. So local zones further extends this infrastructure to bring the services closer in the large metropolitan areas. Tell us more about that. Why did we see the need for local zones? Yeah, I think that's a great question. Yeah. And, and the short answer is customers told us that they need it. Mm -hmm. um, so if you look at AWS regions today, they cover large global footprint across the world. Mm -hmm. And for most of the use cases, regions meet the needs. However, for some applications that are lat latency sensitive or are sensitive to the physical location of the data, local zones come into picture. So let's take an example of you know, Houston. Um, a lot of customers want to serve their end users in Houston with single digit millisecond latency, but the nearest region is North Virginia, which is you know, 80 milliseconds away. Mm. Now with the introduction of Houston local zones, customers can serve their end, end users with single millisecond latency in the Houston metro area, mm -hmm. and as a result provide a much better experience as well. Um, so if you take an example of Supercell, you know, they are deploying game servers across the globe for their multiplayer gaming sessions, and the latency of 20 to 30 milliseconds is ideal for a good gameplay experience. These customers told us that they were using on-premise installations across multiple metros to supplement AWS presence. Mm. And with local zones, they're running real-time multiplayer gaming sessions closer to their end users and providing great experience across the globe. Got it, okay, so AWS services, where I need it, where my end users need it. In this case, the example that you gave, if my end user is in Houston, they can access the local zone in Houston. Mm -hmm. So that's a latency-based use case that we just talked about, especially with the Supercell example. Now, there are, uh, there are customers who also want to use and access AWS services near the source of their data or their on-prem workloads. Tell us more about that use case and how local zones are helping these customers. Yeah, I think there are a variety of reasons why customers use local zones. And one of them is, you know, they want to be closer to their on-premise installations or corporate assets and basically run workloads in a particular location. Mm -hmm. um, so a good example is financial sector or public sector customers who are running their workloads in a particular location to meet residency requirements. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, it could be enterprise customers like MindBody who need to deploy, uh, you know, these workloads closer to their corporate assets like their own data centers. Um, let's you know understand MindBody use case for example. Mm -hmm. So MindBody was running their workloads in LA metro area in mm -hmm. their own data centers, you know, basically on-premise installations, and they told us that you know it can be daunting to migrate portfolio of independent applications to cloud together. Mm -hmm. And what they did was they basically used Direct Connect to set up a hybrid environment with local zones while they connected back to their on-premises installations, mm -hmm. and as a result they were able to migrate applications incrementally. Mm -hmm. uh, what it did was you know, it simplified the migrations drastically and they were able to migrate almost all of their workloads without really refactoring their applications. I see, okay. So before local zones, these customers, they either had to keep these applications in their own data center or mm -hmm. they had to keep their workloads on premises. Now I know you've talked to a lot of developers and you sought their feedback um, in this product journey, tell us what you heard from developers and why they want to change the status quo of operating on-prem or managing their own data center. Yeah, I think 
the consistent feedback that we hear from customers is they, they love the same APIs and experience as they are used to in regions. And the ESO experience is something that comes up in all discussions. You know, another thing that shows up is pay-as-you-go model. Mm -hmm. So they don't have to spin off and procure capacity right you know, at, at the start. They can scale right. as their demand scales. Right. Um, and a lot of customers are able to extend their applications to local zones from regions or from you know, you know, the, the older local zones to the newer ones within a day itself. Mm. And as a result, multiple customers are adopting local zones to unlock various edge computing use cases. Yeah. Okay, and not to mention the cost and of maintaining your cost, your data center, the overhead of management um, associated with it, with AWS local zones, we manage all of that. AWS is taking care of all of that for the customer. That yeah. is right, you know, it just means a lot less overhead for customers. Got it, okay. So we talked about two location sensitive use cases, right? First is uh, low latency, and the second is re requirement for data residency. Mm -hmm. So how are our customers across various industries using local zones today for these location sensitive use cases? Tell us more about that. Yeah, you know, overall customers from multiple industries are adopting local zones to unlock various edge computing use cases. We discussed the real time gaming use case mm -hmm. where customers like Supercell and Ubitus are using local zones to deploy the gaming servers across multiple local zones. And then there are customers like MindBody who are using local zones to do hybrid migrations. Mm -hmm. Another use case that we see across multiple local zones is media and entertainment content creation, mm -hmm. where customers like Netflix and Fox are migrating expensive artist workstations to local zones. Mm -hmm. And the overall intention here is to provide jitter-free experience to, to their end users, who are artists in this case. Given they want to provide this experience, they need lower than five millisecond latency from their animation hubs or offices two local zones where their workloads are running. Okay. And with Direct Connect, uh, th these customers like Netflix are able to connect their animation hubs or offices to the Direct Connect uh, point of presence, mm -hmm. which are connected to local zones. And as a result, they're able to run latent sensitive workloads like live production or video editing in local zones mm -hmm. much closer to their artists and provide you know, this data free experience. Got it, okay. And then there are other customers in financial services industry, in healthcare, or in oil and gas sector as well, who are all using these local zones to migrate their workloads from their corporate assets like on-premise installations or their offices. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's, that's really, uh, it's wonderful to hear what the specific applications across the various industries are, that's very useful. Um, so just to take a moment to recap, AWS Local Zones places compute, storage, and database, as well as networking services closer to end users and is helping customers across a variety of industries as we just heard. So Pranav, let's talk about the specific services that are available in local mm -hmm. zones. Yeah, local zones you know, bring AWS services to more places with the same experience and benefits that developers are used to today in regions. Mm -hmm. So we locally support a lot of services including Amazon EC2, Amazon EBS, ECS, EKS, VPC, and mm -hmm. application load balancer. We also recently added Direct Connect support across multiple local zones in the US, which would enable hybrid use cases across the US and globally as well. And then we support multiple instance types, including T3, C5Ds, R5Ds, and G4DN in these local zones. Mm -hmm. Customers can also go to our web page and understand what services are available in which metros and, and figure out what works for them. That's right, all of that information detailed on our web page as well. Um, and also, this all of the list of services that you, you provided just now, that's not a fixed list, right? Our teams are constantly looking for feedback from customers, uh, getting signals uh, f uh, from our customers to evaluate what services we need and what services we need to add to the local zone. So I know that our first local zone in LA, which launched in 2019, has evolved significantly since then. Um, share with us how this local zone has grown. Yeah, in, in LA, we started with core services where latency really mattered. Mm -hmm. uh, so these services, including EC2, EBS, ALB, FSx were launched on, mm -hmm. on, on day one. And I, as always, you know, we're listening to customer feedback. Since the launch, we've added multiple services in, in the LA local zones, including ECS, EKS, Elastic Cache, and RDS. Got it. And so in addition to the services available in the local zone, every local zone is also connected to the parent region via Amazon's redundant and very high bandwidth private network, giving applications running in the AWS local zones 
fast, secure, and seamless access to the rest of services in the region like DynamoDB, S3, and others. That is right. You know, local zones are extension of parent regions, so they're connected via redundant AWS private backbone network. And all AWS tools work in local zones just like how they work in regions. Mm -hmm. So customers can log their APIs via CloudTrail. They can use familiar and powerful tools like CloudFormation, IAM, auto-scaling to manage, secure, and scale their applications. Mm -hmm. They can also use services like DynamoDB and S3 back in the parent region while we are connected using the backbone. Got it, okay. So you just talked about the seamless uh, experience between local zones and, and regions and the list of services that you can connect back in the region. This is a question we get a lot from our customers. When should a customer choose a AWS local zone over a region mm -hmm. and vice versa? Yeah, so most workloads are best suited for regions mm -hmm. given the scale, breadth, elasticity, and generally lower prices in regions as well. Mm -hmm. So coming back to the use cases we discussed, you know, part of applications that require low latency access or where residency matters, customers should consider local zones over regions. Got it, okay. So you mentioned elasticity of regions. For customers who have a need for low latency or keeping their data in a specific location, how should they think about capacity planning with local zones? Similar to regions, customers don't need to worry about capacity management here. Mm -hmm. You know, we as AWS manage capacity in the background, and customers can either use on-demand uh, customers can either use on-demand instances or they can also reserve capacity. One thing to keep in mind is local zones are smaller than regions, mm -hmm. and while we work hard to provide elastic experience, customers who are planning large-scale migration to local zones should work with their account teams to, to ensure that we meet their needs without any surprises. Got it, okay. So with EC2 instances available on demand and some spot locations, our customers can use pay-as-you-go pricing or purchase uh, saving plans for local zones. Mm -hmm. What about services pricing in the local zones? Yeah, so again, similar to regions, instances and local resources in local zones have their own pricing, mm -hmm. and prices vary by metro. So customers can use pricing calculator or pricing section of respective services to figure out the overall pricing in a particular local zone. Mm -hmm. In general, data transfer is priced for local zones as if they are one of the availability zones in regions. Mm -hmm. So for example, if customers are sending traffic from EC2 running in the local zone to S3 back in the parent region, it's free of cost, just like how it works in regions. Got it, okay, great, all right. So moving on to the number of local zones and our plans looking forward for now. Since we announced local zones at reInvent in 2019, we've launched 17 local zones in the US. And during the time of this conversation, July 2022, we're getting ready to launch local zones in 27 countries across the globe starting this year um, into the next year. Tell our audience more about the international expansion plans, what feedback we've heard from customers, and why we're excited about this next step in our product journey. Yes, so as of now, we have launched 17 local zones in major metropolitan areas in the US and we're launching local zones in 33 metros globally in the next 18 months. Mm -hmm. The overall goal here is to you know, replicate what we did in the US and allow customers to deliver a single digit millisecond latency experience to end users across the globe. Mm. And we're working with a number of additional features and services, making it even simpler for customers to extend their applications to more locations. Okay, so we definitely have a lot to look forward to. I'm gonna come back to the first thing we talked about which is our global footprint for our infrastructure and what this means for our customers. We're adding 33 local zones in 27 countries. Mm -hmm. We've announced plans for eight more regions. How should our customers who are interested in local zones think about architecting for high availability, leveraging this broad AWS infrastructure we have? Local zones can be used for higher availability while customers maintain low latency access. There are several options that exist today for higher availability Customers can partition their workloads between local zones and availability zones in the regions. They can also use two local zones in nearby metros, mm. which is a pattern that we typically see for distributed edge use cases like mm -hmm. gaming and you know telco. Mm -hmm. And then customers can also use two local zones in the same metro area. For example, in LA where we have a first local zone and second local zone available as part of the same network water group customers can partition their application between those two local zones, just like how they would do it in AZs in the regions. Mm -hmm. And then 
The other option is for customers to also partition between a local zone and an outpost which is running on-premises in their own data centers. Yeah. You know, overall, there are multiple options that exist here, and we recommend that customers should work with their AWS specialist when architecting these options. Great. Thank you, Pranav. Appreciate you joining us today and talking to us about local zones. Yeah, thanks for having me here. Thank you. All right, to summarize for our audience, AWS local zones are a type of infrastructure that places compute, storage, and networking services close to end users. Along with regions, availability zones, and our other hybrid infrastructure solutions like AWS Outposts and AWS Wavelength. AWS Local Zones helps our customers easily deploy location-sensitive workloads, be it for, their, for low latency or to meet local data processing needs in a fully managed AWS environment. Customers can now achieve low single-digit millisecond latency in minutes by deploying their applications on AWS Local Zones when a region is not close enough, and also keep their data within geopolitical boundaries when an AWS local zone is available near them. We have 17 local zones that are generally available in the US and are expanding local zones to 33 metros across 27 countries starting in 2022. For more information on AWS local zones, please visit our website or get in touch directly with us. Thank you for joining us today.